This is the Bianchi Arcadex gravel bike. And before I say anything else about it, I have a confession. When I first saw press photos of this bike when it launched, I thought it was hideous. But I'm very pleased to say that in the real world, I think it works. The headlines on this bike are that it has a full carbon frame, it's got mudguard mounts, which I like very much, and it's sort of Bianchi's first proper stab at a modern gravel bike. The Arcadex comes in three models. The cheapest costs £2,975 and has Shimano GRX RX600 components, so that's 105 equivalent. The middle model, which is this one, has RX810 components, which are Altegra equivalent and costs £3,250. The most expensive model gets GRX DI2 components and costs £4,850. I'm going to talk you through every detail of this bike and what it's like to ride, but before I do that, drop us a cheeky little like, maybe even subscribe if you don't already, hit the little bell icon so that you get notified every time we upload a new video. Bianchi is a brand that we perhaps most associate with very classic looking road bikes, usually in that celeste green colour that is the signature of the company. The Arcadex is projecting an entirely different aesthetic and there really is lots going on. It's fair to say it's quite a challenging piece of design, but as I said, I do think it kind of works. Perhaps the most distinctive feature is that kink at the back of the top tube, which really draws your eye. You've also obviously got dropped seat stays, which are now bike designers' favourite way to add rear end comfort while maintaining a very small rear triangle that's laterally stiff. The whole look of the bike is chunky and assertive. Everything is boxy. And if you look at the bottom bracket, there is practically a box down there. Now you might be looking at that bike thinking, is that an e-bike? Because there's this strange sort of compartment where the seat tube and the down tube meet. That is actually a clue to Bianchi's future intentions for this frame set. This is not an e-bike, but there is going to be an e-bike version of this down the line. And that boxy hatch area is going to be a charging port for the e-bike system. Moving to the front of the bike, things get slightly more organic. The head tube is quite smooth and rounded, but it's got a slash through it that kind of mirrors the kink in the top tube. So they've kind of thought about the harmony of the whole design. The fork is quite kind of slippery looking as well. Bianchi doesn't make any aero claims about this bike, but there are kind of truncated aerofoil sections on the seat tube, for example, and the fork legs are very, very wide front to back, but extremely skinny viewed from the front suggesting that Aero was in the designer's mind. As you'd hope for a modern gravel bike, the tyre clearances are very generous. This is designed to take 700 by 42 tyres or 650 by 47. The tyres fitted here are 700 by 37 and you can see there's plenty of room around them. The headset space is split so you can lower the front end without having to disconnect brakes or anything but like many bikes, you are supposed to cut the steerer when you lower the bars. You're not strictly speaking allowed to run spaces on top of the stem. The Arcadex is not covered in bosses for attaching all manner of luggage, but it does have a couple on the top tube in addition to the usual bottle cage bosses so that you can run a bento box style thing for added snackery while you're riding. More importantly, and very excitingly if you're me and a little bit sad, is that the Bianchi is designed to take mud guards. There are mounts at the rear dropouts, mounts to accept a seat stay bridge at the back, and there are tabs at the front. There is one slightly odd thing, however, about the mounts at the front, which is that the eyelets are not threaded. I'm waiting for Bianchi to tell me exactly why that is, because in principle that would mean that you'd need to use nuts and bolts rather than a conventional system where you'd simply bolt into an eyelet. Maybe there's a proprietary mudguard coming? I'm not sure, but it's a little bit of a quirk. Nevertheless, it should be possible to fit full mudguards to this bike, and that's great because there really aren't that many carbon bikes that let you do that. It's very clear looking at the gravel bikes on the market that nobody can 
quite agree on what the best approach is, particularly when it comes to geometry. The Arcadex has relatively conventional geometry that you wouldn't call super progressive. The reach on this size medium Arcadex is 374 millimeters, which is pretty typical for a road bike. It wouldn't be out of place on most endurance bikes. And that means that it's got a relatively road length stem. It's about 100 millimeters. The stack, on the other hand, is very tall. It's 595 millimeters for this, again, size medium bike which in road bike terms would be pretty exceptionally upright. It'd be right at the very comfiest end of the endurance road bike market. The angles are reasonably gravelly. While the seat angle of 73 and a half degrees would be totally normal for a road bike, the head angle is reasonably slack at 71 degrees, which again is part of that creating more forgiving handling for off-road riding. The wheelbase is at the less flighty end of the spectrum as well. It's 1,024 millimetres for this size. The middle spec Arcadex we have here has Shimano GRX RX810 mechanical components, which, just as a reminder, are equivalent to Altegra on the roadside. If you'd like to know more about the ins and out of Shimano GRX, do watch the very detailed review that we recently released. <laughs> Bianchi has opted for a one-by drivetrain for this bike. However, there is a mount for a front derailleur, so it is theoretically possible to run two by. As this is a one-by drivetrain, only the right-hand lever is a shifter, the left is just a brake lever. You're also getting the RX812 rear derailleur, which is designed for a bigger cassette, but has less chain capacity than the two by option. The gearing is a 40 tooth at the front and an 11 to 42 cassette. I'm pleased that Bianchi's opted for the smaller chainring option for this bike, because as I've commented in previous gravel bike reviews, the low end that you get with GRX one by isn't that low so it's best to go as low as you can. GRX components incidentally come at various levels and I should point out that while you're getting an RX810 Altegra equivalent drivetrain for the most part, the actual cranks on this bike are RX600, so 105 level. The wheels on this bike are not hugely exciting if I'm honest, they're very normal workaday gravel wheels they are Alex rims, aluminium rims with a 21mm internal width, which is plenty for most gravel tyres, and they're riding on Shimano's kind of basic RS470 hubs, which are perfectly decent components, but they're not the sort of thing that people are going to get terribly excited about. The finishing kit is all in-house. It's branded Reparto Corse, which is what Bianchi calls its own stuff. The bar and stem are aluminium, and the bar has a subtle bit of flair, but nothing too dramatic. The post is also aluminium, which is perhaps slightly surprising, and it's 31.6 millimetres, which is the larger of the two more common seat post sizes. The tyres, often a defining characteristic of a gravel bike, simply because they have such a significant influence on how it rides, are WTB Riddlers in 37 millimetres. They're a good all-round choice, good on tarmac, not too slow, but able to cope in a mixed variety of gravel conditions. This bike, which as a reminder is a size medium, weighs 9.8 kilos, not including pedals. Before I start philosophizing about the true nature of gravel and what that means as a cycling niche, I want to say one thing, which is that I have very much enjoyed riding the Arcadex. It's come as, in some ways, quite a pleasant surprise because in the past, sometimes when more traditional manufacturers in the road world have done gravel, they've slightly missed the mark. And while I don't think the Arcadex is perfect, it comes together in a nice package that's just enjoyable to ride and kind of works. There's no question that in many respects, the bike does have quite a road feel to it. It's not super, super plush. There's no kind of built-in fancy squishy technology, but obviously you can use tire pressure as a way to moderate comfort a bit. With that though comes a nice road-like liveliness. It's nice and stiff when you're pushing hard and it feels very accurate when you're riding on the road. Really, with road tires, it could quite easily pass as a road bike, 
but obviously because you've got that very tall stack, it's more of a comfy armchair position, a bit like the Specialized Diverge. In some ways, the overall personality of this bike reminds me a bit of the Van Riesel gravel bike that we featured recently, but where that slightly got things wrong on the spec front, I think Bianchi has mostly done a better job. Bar choice is really key here, and while I'm not necessarily the greatest fan of flared bars in general, I think the subtle flair that Bianchi's gone for really works, and most importantly, the width at the hoods is sufficient. These are nominally 42 centimetre bars and they measure about 41, 42 at the hoods, which is enough that when you're riding on more technical terrain, you don't feel really bunched up if you stay on the hoods. At the same time, the drops aren't super deep, so if you want to hunker down for more technical terrain and really good control of the brakes, that's also an option. The Arcadex is perhaps a little bit firmer riding than I assumed it would be from looking at it, and I think there are a couple of factors at play here. One is that seat post. I said it's the larger of the two more common sizes. It's also an aluminium post, and I do think on a bike of this price, it wouldn't be totally unreasonable to expect a carbon seat post. One reason that Bianchi has opted for the larger seat post size, though, is that it means that you could potentially fit a dropper post if you wanted to. If you're wondering, by the way, why I keep talking about seat post diameters, it's simply because the skinnier a post is, the more it's able to flex, and flex adds comfort. That's all there is to it. Now, I mentioned how incredibly large the fork legs are front to back, and quite simply, again, they're probably not able to flex that much. So you do end up with a front end that is firmer than it would be with a more traditional, very skinny fork. That's not to say that this bike is uncomfortable, it's not by any stretch, but in the kind of pantheon of squishy gravel bikes, this is probably at the more road end of things. I always seem to end up talking about gearing with gravel bikes, and I do think that if you're gonna have a 1x11 drivetrain, this is a pretty good compromise setup for working both on and off road. I would personally like slightly lower gears for when I'm riding on super steep stuff because that 40, 42 bottom end isn't ultra low, but for a fit rider who's generally riding reasonably fast and not carrying lots and lots of stuff, this is certainly adequate. For me, the ability to mix things up on and off-road is a huge part of the appeal of a gravel bike because most gravel rides for me do start out on the road even if I spend a lot of time not on the road. These WTB Riddler tyres are quite a good choice for that. They do roll really quite well on tarmac. You don't feel like they're holding you back and they'll work in kind of dusty, gritty conditions and a bit of mud, but they don't have the aggressive tread that you would need for like proper mud plugging. As with any gravel bike, you should really run them tubeless as well. I haven't been for my brief testing, but to get the best out of this bike, tubeless is definitely the way to go. One detail that I criticised that Van Riesel gravel bike for was excessive toe overlap, which can catch you out in low speed manoeuvres when you're doing technical terrain. The Arcadex has the tiniest, tiny bit of toe overlap, but it's such a small amount with my UK size 9 feet that it's never caught me unawares and it's not something that you really have to think about while you're riding. There's always a temptation with gravel bikes to rate them as kind of strange mountain bikes and like any rigid gravel bike the limitation on what you can ride is partly down to how brave you're feeling because basically with no suspension it's not going to be forgiving when you ride down something that's very rooty or rocky. Saying that, the riding position, that fairly tall stack, reasonably wide bar, means that it is quite forgiving off-road and you can get away with stuff that on the face of it probably doesn't seem like that great an idea for something that's more or less road bike shaped. Even though Bianchi hasn't gone down the route of super kind of progressive geometry, I would describe the overall riding experience as very forgiving and quite confidence inspiring when you are off-road. It's also worth saying that there really aren't any particular holes in the spec. If there were one thing that I would immediately consider changing, it would be to a more flexible carbon seat post, but that's quite a small thing. I don't set out to be rude about bikes when I review them. Making negative reviews is actually quite unpleasant sometimes, and I don't enjoy slating the hard work of bike designers. 
I'm relieved to say though that the Arcade X is a very likeable bike. I think we can get really caught up in the kind of theoretical ideal of what a gravel bike should be because there are lots of competing narratives for where gravel is going. But what matters ultimately is that the Arcade X is enjoyable to ride and is well specced. It's not stunning value for money, you could maybe arguably expect more for your money, but it's also not stupidly expensive. And if you want a Bianchi gravel bike, you're certainly not going to be disappointed by it. We've covered various different approaches to how to make a gravel bike in our recent videos. I'd love to know what you think of Bianchi's take on this riding genre. For starters, do you like the way this bike looks? Because I'm not sure that it comes across that well on camera, but in reality, I think it does work. At the same time, do you like the idea of this kind of road adjacent gravel thing that mixes it up on and off tarmac? Please let me know in the comments, like this video, subscribe if you don't already, and really importantly, hit that little bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a video.